Lions Tour 2021 is surprisingly only like eight months away. Uh, there's been one big announcement in terms of the fixtures list, which I'll, uh, I'll talk over in just a second. But uh, also we can have a look at who's the favorite at the minute. Eight months out from the tournament, who's the favorite to get it done. Uh, who do we think is going to be captain? Who are the broadcasters and whatnot? We're still eight months out, so fair to say there's still a fair bit of uncertainty as to what's going to happen. COVID in eight months' time. Nobody knows what's going to be happening in that situation. Let's hope things are back to normal, but eight months, it might be a touch optimistic, but we'll wait and see. Uh, the, the people organizing things are still kind of going... Going ahead full steam as if everything's gonna gonna pan out, but obviously they're making contingency plans as well. Uh, the fixtures list has been out for a while. I think I did a video on that quite some time ago. I'll see if I can link it if I remember. Uh, so basically, it was Stormers, South African uh, Invitational Team, Sharks, South Africa A, Bulls, and then the three tests against the Box. So they dropped a couple of games. They made the tournament, well, the um, the tour a little bit shorter. But I thought overall, it's kind of still going to have the f same feeling about it. It has gone now and gotten slightly longer again with the addition of, uh, of one extra match. And that one is against Japan and it is in the UK. So it's going to be at Murrayfield. I think they said it's the first time that the, the Lions will have played at Murrayfield. Uh, they have played a few games in Europe before, but it's pretty seldom, obviously, because they're a touring team. Uh, they did play, um, they did play Argentina like in 2005. So, yeah, man, it's a big win for Japan. Japan seems to be since that Rugby World Cup, they're kind of the flavor of the month. They are the, and rightly so, they're the team that everybody wants to court because they're a good quality team. They play exciting rugby, and the financial package is kind of there to go. It's kind of there to go with them. It goes with them. So yeah, if you can get Japan, you're going to get probably a fair bit of revenue as well. So it's a kind of double win for Japan. You get to play the Lions, a bit more exposure. And um, yeah, it's a win for the organizers of the tour as well, because everyone's trying to make back some of that lost money due to all the cancelled games and whatnot from COVID. So yeah, that's a, an interesting one. Obviously, they're still not sure how many fans, if any fans, would be allowed in a Murrayfield. That's still, it's almost like another world away, eight months so we will have to kind of watch that one with interest. I kind of feel sorry for Argentina because they play with us, uh, All Blacks, here in the Rugby Championship. They're the only team which doesn't get, the only nation which doesn't get a Lions Tour of the, the four Rugby Championship teams. Obviously, it's South Africa, Australia, and New Zealand. And they are such a huge money spinner. Like, I think Aussies ran at a loss for quite some time, only to be kind of essentially just bailed out. They just made a truckload of money the last time they had a Lions Tour. It's virtually just like, you know, a guaranteed massive boost to your to your organization. So the, the, the Pumas guys miss out on that, which is an unfortunate one for them. Uh, they, like I mentioned, were the last team to take on the Lions over in the UK. So I kind of feel like it'd be nice to get the Pumas involved somehow. Like if they could get one game every Lions Tour in lieu of actually having a Lions tour of their own, like at least they would get kind of a taster. But I guess it's not its not about the Pumas, man. It's about the Lions. So yeah, that just is what it is. So yeah, that's uh, it's good. It's good to have Japan involved. It's going to certainly increase the market appeal of the Lions tour uh, as if it needs that. But I'm not sure how, how big the Lions tour is in Japan. This will certainly make it a wee bit bigger. So yeah, one extra fixture. Uh, interestingly though, uh, they said that fixture clashes with the Premiership final. So the Gallagher Premiership in England. So obviously Warren Gatland would be planning for those players involved in that final to not be involved in this game because they'll be otherwise engaged. But the the reports say that because that week won't be like a, a test window week, that none of the guys based in any of the Premiership teams will be able to play. So... That's kind of an unfortunate one if your team's already well knocked out of the premiership if you didn't make the playoffs. And Gatland would have otherwise liked to have seen you play a game. At this point, eight months out anyway, it doesn't look likely that's, that's going to happen. So 
who knows if that affects anybody's chances some fringe guys or maybe some of the core guys we will kind of have to wait and see what kind of impact that has but yeah it's unfortunate the um i don't know the battle between the clubs and the the international organizers seems to just be a bit of an ongoing joke in rugby but i'm not sure we're the only sport but anyway we'll see uh interestingly for the odds i had a look to see who's the favorites and who's the underdog and it was curious to see that uh, the lions are the favorites going into this one which i say interesting because although they drew in new zealand and they won in australia prior to that lions tours had not been all that successful they went on a bit of a losing run for a few uh a few tours but they go into this one and i looked at various bookmakers and again don't look at bookmakers as like crystal ball accurate predictions it's more where people are chucking their money and where the bookmakers think they can turn some coin but the lions would be about 55 percent favorites where the spring box would be 40 odd with like a two something uh percent chance almost three percent chance of a draw drawn series so like $1.66 or $2.20 basically. So not huge favorites, but slight favorites, which I find kind of incredible given that the the Springboks are at home and they are the world champions. Maybe it's the fact that these guys don't think it can be to do with South Africa being in an extra lockdown, right? I can't, I can't imagine that's the case. So it's a bit of a weird one. Uh, it could also be the fact that a lot more Lions fans are putting money on the Lions to skew the... The results of the bookmakers but i looked at a south african bookmaker as well and they also had the lions as the favorite so yeah go figure the lions at this point are the favorites i can tell you like two years out from the the lions tour of new zealand when they were uh, opening betting over here you better believe new zealand was pretty strong favorites but i guess i don't know anyway that is what it is uh how about for captain uh again looking at bookmakers who are the favorites Kind of some of the obvious choices are your three favorites, which is Alan Wynne Jones, uh, Owen Farrell, and Mauro Otoje. Depending on which bookmaker he goes with, they've all got those guys kind of at similar odds for being captain. There's a bit of talk that maybe uh, if the English players aren't released for that opening round against Japan, that may be one step harder to appoint an Englishman as captain, or I guess alternatively a Welshman, Irishman, or Scotsman if they were playing in the Premiership and likewise not released. But, um, yeah, that's your favorite three guys. And it probably is going to be one of those three, you'd have to say. Uh, the favorite in terms of the, the Irish was James Ryan, interestingly, not Johnny Sexton. Uh, but I guess who's going to play Tim for the, um, the Lions? Will Sexton go on the tour at his age? Who knows? Probably too old. Don't know. Still playing captain for Leinster. James Ryan doesn't captain his club. Uh, and Stuart Hogg, even further down the line was a favorite given gatlin's record with picking scotsman for the flipping 15 or 23 seeing a scottish captain alliance for the tour that i think would be a bit of a long shot but uh yeah we will have to see so i don't know what do you guys reckon alawin jones owen farrell maro toje a lot of people i've spoken to seem to think maro may be the man uh for the job in terms of the broadcasters it seems to be too far out to have a lot of that confirmation and i guess the COVID factor probably doesn't add any clarity to that in the uk it seems that sky sports sky sports uk will be the broadcaster they have confirmed the rights locked in i'm gonna go out and say it's in all likelihood it'll be super sport that has it in south africa but for the rest of the countries sky sport will be a favorite in new zealand uh whether espn picks it up in the states it'll probably be foxtel and ko in australia it's probably going to be most of your usual players but every now and again with a big event like this you might get some big one like amazon prime got the autumn nations cup you know you might get some big online platform that chucks a bunch of money at it because apart from world cup it's one of the biggest events on the rugby calendar so um yeah there's been a few quotes from the organizers of the lions tour they're obviously saying uh interest is off the scale they're focusing on plan a which is everything goes ahead with fans and whatnot but they're also making contingency plans they're ready to deal with whatever covid environment they find themselves in 
there's no one who's got any absolute certainty in what the situation's going to be. They've got contingency planning in the background with various scenarios. There are lots of reasons to be optimistic. Uh, they mentioned some countries we've got fans returning to venues like here in New Zealand and uh, in Australia, they've got, you know, kind of socially distanced fans and whatnot. Um, so yeah, they're, they're kind of talking up their chances, which is what you would expect them to do. It's their competition, so they're not exactly going to say, boom, this is going to be pretty tough. But um, yeah. What do you guys reckon? You happy with Japan being added? Are you like me, kind of a bit sad for the Pumas? Or do you think Japan is maybe a better prospect for for adding that extra game on British soil? If you were a Lions fan and wanting to get yourself to a Lions game without having to travel to like, you know, Australia, New Zealand, South Africa for the tours... One of these few home games is probably your best chance to get that done, assuming there's tickets sold. Uh, what do you reckon about the South Africans seemingly being the underdogs despite being world champions and at home? Uh, that's an interesting one for me. Uh, Captain, do you agree? Alan jones Farrell, and Atoje are probably your three frontrunners. Broadcasters, if you have read anything else about other broadcasters being confirmed, do let us know as well. Those kind of comments are always really useful, although eight months out, probably not an urgent one we can kind of wait and see but uh yeah do you reckon it'll go ahead do you reckon there will be fans what do you guys reckon eight months is it early enough to get excited i think so man lions tours don't come around every day so um yeah we'll see what happens you guys let me know your thoughts and uh yeah i'll talk to you again soon see you later